So, welcome to the first lesson of our module 2, which is on fault calculations or symmetrical components. So, this first part of the lesson is going to be mainly dealing with knowing about symmetrical components as well as trying to do an analysis of a normal three-phase system with those symmetrical components in them. So we utilize symmetrical components in order to convert our unbalanced system into a set of balanced systems. And that set of balanced systems is called symmetrical components. So a quick recap into what we know is that our symmetrical faults are normal three-phase faults that you have, which we call them balance faults as well. So what happens in a balanced fault is that your fault current in all your three phases will be exactly the same. Your voltages will also be equal and they will be 120 degrees apart. Um, your power system can be treated as a single phase system when you do all of your calculations in that. And if you've got a neutral, then the line to neutral voltage will be driven by your phase voltage in that system. Looking at the bottom now, I've just put in where you've got a star to star system and you basically can see it going from red to the other red phase from your source to your load and does the same thing for your green as well as your blue phase that you see in there. Then that represents the phaser diagram where you can see your A, B and C phase in vector form so that you can see that they are spread at 120 degrees from each other. So this concludes what we would have as a balanced fault. Now in this chapter, we're dealing with unbalanced faults. So therefore, your unsymmetrical faults are actually called our unbalanced fault. And it's funny that we call them unsymmetrical because we end up saying that we divide them into three sets of symmetrical components. It's a little bit uh, something to grasp that your unsymmetrical faults is going to actually give you symmetrical components, which is your three sets of balanced faults that you are going to get out of that system. So in this one, the first one I'm introducing, we call it a positive phase sequence all right then you're going to be having a negative phase sequence and your last one is your zero phase sequence now i just want to discuss quickly your positive phase sequence and i've written a b c at the bottom if you can see from that phaser and i've put in that red cross that is a plus to show that is positive and then there is that arrow and a dot that is gray that you see in there so if your axis rotates and goes through that dot at the top that is gray on your positive phase sequence it must follow a sequence of abc going through that dot so that's why you have an a sitting at zero degrees we'll have a b sitting at minus 120 or a 240 and a c sitting at a positive 120. then we go to your negative phase sequence and you can see that in your negative phase sequence if you had to rotate this axis through that dot that you see in there you can see that it's going to go through as an a C, B through that dot, okay? So if you look at the bottom of what I've done on that phaser diagram, I've got two circles in, a blue and a red circle. So the blue circle, if you look carefully, it's got an A, C, B in it, whereas your red circle has got a C, B, A in it. So if your A, for example, was not necessarily at zero degrees, was, but was, was at higher up, maybe let's say at 90 degrees, then obviously your first point that would go through that red that dot would be your C followed by B and then only followed by your A point. So therefore, that is why I have written it both ways. It can either be called negative phase sequence or they can say it's an ACB or they can even say it's a CBA sequence. You must know all three of them. Then the last one is your zero phase sequence and all that the zero phase sequence is saying as compared to your positive and your negative, which has all of your phases at 120 degrees apart from each other, in your zero phase sequence, 
all your phases, your A, your B, and your C phase are all equal in magnitude and they are at the same angle. So we're now going to try to see how we go about resolving our unbalanced system. I'm going to introduce for you an operator that we call alpha and that alpha is represented by 120 degrees. So in the vector diagram I have at the bottom right hand side where you can see it's a balance system written as ABC, so it's a positive phase sequence. It shows that my EA would be at EA and at zero degrees, all right? Whereas my EB would be the same value as my EA because all their magnitudes are the same. But the difference is the angle and the angle is at 120 degrees from the other phase. So in this case, because you can see it's at the bottom, it means it's at 240 degrees. And if I go back to my alpha, that means that I represent 240 as an alpha squared. Then if I go to my EC, which is on the top, uh, quadrant, I can see that it's at 120 degrees of EA and therefore I represent it by alpha. So alpha is 120 degrees and alpha squared is 240 degrees. So since the phases are symmetrical, which means that they've now become a balanced system, I know if I had to add all of my voltages, I would get them equating to a zero. So if I do my EA, EB, and EC, and I say that I name them all according to EA, which I've got at the top there, then I can take out the EA as a common factor, and I will have a 1 plus alpha plus alpha squared. Therefore, if I go at the bottom now on your left-hand side, you can see that that 1 plus alpha plus my alpha squared equals to 0. And they tell me that in terms of my J notation, your alpha squared, which is just looking really at your 240 degree angle, uh, is going to be 0 0.5 minus J 0 0.866, whereas your alpha is going to be minus 0 0.5 plus J 0 0.866. So if I had to add my alpha plus my alpha squared, taking those two things together, you can see that I would get a negative one. And therefore, I can go and represent or take that back to that formula that said one plus alpha plus alpha squared equals to zero to prove that it really does equate to a zero. So in this slide, we now have a system which is the top system showing my EA, my EB, and my EC, that I am going to resolve it into my three symmetrical component system. All right. So at the bottom of my slide, you can see that I've got a positive phase sequence that has got a VA1, VB1, VC1, a negative phase, which is a VA2, VB2, and VC2, and then a zero phase sequence that everything has got a zero next to it. So I think as you can gather now that we're saying a positive phase sequence will represent with a one, a negative phase sequence with a two, and a zero phase sequence with a zero on it. So looking at the phasor diagram that I have, my EA can simply be, if I name it according to the all the three symmetrical components, it's going to be my VA0 plus VA1 plus VA2 will make up what my EA is. Whereas my VB or my EB would be made up of VB0, VB1, and VB2. And then my EC is similarly on the same naming conversion. Then what I do is that I write all of those above equations in terms of EA. And I do this utilizing my alpha operator, remembering that alpha is 120, alpha squared is 240 degrees. So my EA would still give me my VA0 plus VA1 plus VA2, but my EB now will give me on my zero phase sequence, it will still be the same because my VA0, my VB0, and my VC0 are exactly the same. So I'd have VA0, but then for my VB1, 
you go onto the positive phase sequence and you look at where is the VB1 on the positive phase sequence phasor diagram at the bottom. And it's the first one on the left hand side. And you can see that it is at 240 degrees. So therefore, it becomes my alpha squared VA1. I name it all according to VA. And then I go to my negative phase sequence and I look at where do I see VB2? And I can see that VB2 is at 120 degrees, so therefore it becomes alpha times my VA2. Then I go to my EC network and it's going to be exactly the same. For my VC0 is equal to VA0. And then for my VC1, you go to your positive phase sequence and you can see that your VC1 is at 120 degrees. So therefore it's alpha VA1. Then you go to your negative phase sequence and you look at where is my VC2 and you can see it's at 240 degrees. So it becomes alpha squared VA2. So if you now move off from the previous slide by adding your EA, EB, and EC, you are going to have that as 3VA0. Please go to that previous slide and try to add them up together, remembering that your 1 plus alpha plus alpha squared equals to 0, and see if you come up with the same answer. Now that you have come up with the same answer, if you make VA0 your subject of your formula, you will see that is equal to a third into brackets of EA, EB, and EC sum. And then if I had to go and take that and I multiply it by my alpha and my alpha squared, what would I then have? So therefore, I would have alpha EB is equal to alpha VA0 plus VA1 plus alpha squared VA2. And then I multiplied EC by alpha squared and I would have what is written in V. Now, how do I know what is the multiplication of my alpha times my alpha squared when I do this? I simply go on the side here on the left hand side, you can see I've multiplied using the J notation and I can see that my alpha times alpha squared is a 1, and my alpha squared times alpha squared is an alpha. So I end up knowing that if I multiply those by EB by alpha and EC by alpha squared, that's what I would get. And it would basically give me 3VA1. And therefore, my VA1 can be simplified into what you see as a third into EA plus alpha EB plus alpha squared EC. Remembering then that I will have my VB1 being equal to alpha squared VA1 and my VC1 being alpha VA1. Then I will do the same onto my EB and my EC, but now I swap them around and multiply the EB by alpha squared and the EC by alpha, I would get that, and that would end up giving me my VA2 as subject of my formula, which is going to be a third into EA plus alpha squared EB plus alpha C. So therefore, I will have my VB2 being equal to alpha VA2, and my VC2 is alpha squared VA2. And at the bottom there, I will throw in all my three components that is your positive your negative and your zero phase sequence so i've added an example that will assist you with the tutorial that's at the end of this session so that you can see how you can go about doing the tutorial you're given va vp and vc and you are asked to find your symmetrical components of these three phases so you'd work out what VA0 by utilizing the formula. You know that that becomes also VB0 and VC0. You'd go work out VA1, and that would then by default give you VB1 and VC1. Then you'd go work out VA2, which will then also assist you in getting your VB2 and VC2.
This summarizes what you would get as your symmetrical component analysis of a three-phase network. So you can see your positive phase sequence where your A, B, and C are, and you can see your negative phase sequence, and you can see your zero phase sequence. And then on your at the bottom of that, it shows you your sinusoidal waves, and you can see that you have an unbalance in the system because their magnitudes are not all the same throughout. And then this summarizes then if we have your V0, your V1, and your V2, that you can utilize exactly the same formulas to work out your I0, I1, and I2. And then if you had to work out your impedances, you'd simply use your Ohm's law, that your Z0 would be V0 over I0, and so on. Then this is the tutorial that you had on your set of notes that were handed to you before, where you had three questions and you had to compute a couple of things in them. So I have done that the first one, you work out first your IAN, utilizing the formula of IA0 plus IA1 plus IA2, which you have been given. Then you'd go out, work out your IB, which would be your IB0, IB1, IB2, but you remember that you write them all in terms of IA0, and then your IC, which is IC0, IC1, and IC2, but you also go and write it out in terms of IA. So therefore, you would have all of those three, then that would enable you to be able to give your power that you have been asked to work out and your power is your voltage times your current times the sine of and your angle becomes your voltage angle which you then subtract your current angle in it so you go work out qa qb and your qc and you just simply add them up to get the final answer your question two you would also go and work out all of your three currents in then you've got your question three i've just thrown the voltages that they've given you in there as the first thing and then you go work out what your va naught is which will give you then your vb naught and vc naught you work out your va1 and from there you can deduce your vb1 and vc1 then you go work out your va2 which you can then deduce your vb2 and VC too far. Thank you very much.